Good morning. My name is uh, Andres Alegria, and I'm a co-producer, director of the film A Song for Caesar. And uh, with me is uh, my co-director, Abel Sanchez. Abel. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today, Abel and Andres? Good morning. Doing good. My name is Abel. Abel Sanchez here. He just introduced me. So wonderful. Here. Yeah, so I'm excited to learn more about your project, A Song for Caesar. I've been able to watch the trailer, but I would love to kind of just learn a little bit about how the project comes to be and, you know, what it looked like to conceptualize the project and bring it to life. Sure. Well, it starts with uh, a song, a song called Song for Caesar that uh, Abel co-wrote and recorded with uh, Jorge Santana. And, and Babel, why don't you go ahead and describe that? Yes, uh, well, we uh, we were in the studio when we wrote this song and it uh, came about as, uh, as a result of kind of feeling like Cesar Chavez's spirit had entered into the studio. And it's, uh, it, was, it was an intention to, to do a documentary, but after we finished the song, uh, people heard it, they well, they loved it. They were, it was received really well. And we were grateful for that. But at the same time, uh, people started saying, uh, you know what, you should put some footage, some video to the song. And which uh, I said, well, that's a great idea, but I don't know how to do that. I'm a musician. And they said, well, we know somebody that's really versed in editing in the film uh, industry and in, in, in film and editing. And they said, we know a guy and the guy happened to be on this who became my partner in a venture that ultimately led to making a documentary. Uh, so that's how this all started was the beginning of awesome. Song for Caesar. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Well, I have to push back. Like I'm going to push back on some of the things that you said, we'll unpack some of them. You said you were working, singing this song and you said it felt like Caesar Chavez had entered this, the studio space. Talk about that. What's the song all about and how did it feel like that? Well, um, the song is about uh, basically about uh, Caesar's uh, vision when, you know, I knew the history of Cesar Chavez and the farm worker movement and had a lot of passion, compassion for what those people uh, go through, the struggle, the farm workers and their families. And Caesar being the hero that he was in Dolores Huerta, uh, somehow, you know, I was thinking about the, the theme of the song was about that, about the somewhat the oppressed or underserved people. And uh, and the theme of the song is about that to, you know, equality and trying to uh, uh, share the message that everybody deserves equal treatment and better condition, you know, just decent con conditions, you know. And that's what the theme of the song was, the, the lyrics, that's what I wrote. And it, and it happened so fast. I mean, I, I didn't intend on doing that. But I somehow that's why I say I feel the spirit of Cesar Chavez entered when I was doing the lyrics. And uh, and the next thing you know, we were on that mission. So that's kind of how spiritually, I would say, it happened. And I'm grateful for that. that. You know? Yeah, I love that. And so is the name of the song a song for Caesar? Yes, that's correct. It, it, it started that way and still is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, or, or, except originally when... Uh, you wrote it and you recorded it with uh, Jorge. Uh, the you initially was called "Free." the The yeah. title of the song was "Free," right? And you no. changed the name afterwards. Yeah, no, no. Actually, it was the song <laughs> "Free" <laughs> was the rhythm section. We had a rhythm section, okay. and it was a rhythm piece instrumental. We laid down the rhythm section, rhythm cut. And yeah, and there's right. I mean, it was the rhythm section was called free. But when I was in the studio alone that night, I was playing that rhythm section to maybe put some pieces to it. And then the lyrics came out. So at that point, we changed that's when we said, Yeah, no, this is a song for Sessa. I mean, that's what I titled it. So yeah, you're right, it was free, <laughs> but uh, you know. Yeah. So that's really powerful if you think of it metaphorically, like the rhythm section is free and it kind of lays the foundation and then you build on that and it comes to this. And then you add on the layer of Andres, the filmmaker. So talk about yeah. how you come up into the project, Andres. So we had a, a friend in common, um, Norman Jayo, who used to work at KPFA uh, years ago. 
was one of the people who started the apprenticeship program there at KPFA. Um, and I had worked with radio in radio with Norman for a number of years. Abel knew Norman uh, through the music uh, side. Uh, Abel was, uh, Norman was a musician and we had some friends at Common. So it was Norman Jio that brought us together and I listened to the song and I thought, okay, this is certainly something that's doable. I um, contacted a friend who had done some PBS uh, shows about the farm workers and he said, go ahead and use the footage. This was a very sort of spontaneous um, kind of improvised project. And I put video to uh, the six minute song and we uh, turned it into a, a DVD. We did some interviews with uh, some um, people related to the United Farm Workers and we created a DVD that we donated to the Cesar Chavez Foundation and they used the DVD in their um, educational uh, projects. Uh, showing it to to kids in classrooms um, around the country, so that's how I, how I got involved, and um, you know the next step was was we had done some interviews for the DVD, and you know it kind of made sense to maybe take this somewhere else, and Abel showed the video to Maya Angelou, and uh, Maya Angelou very clearly said that this is something that had to be taken to the next step, to the next level. And that's what we did. So Abel, is Maya Angela somebody who you see frequently? Well, uh, unfortunately she passed away, you know, a couple of years ago. Oh, that's right. Yes. But yeah, but no, I was, uh, over the years, I'd, I met her back in the late sixties, actually about 1970. And, uh, and we became close friends in terms of she 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 loved my band. She used to come hear the band because of her her son was a fan of my band, and uh, so he used to come. And so one weekend, Maya Angelou came out to hear our band when she was here on the West Coast, and she loved the band. So after that, she started coming whenever she was in the area. She would come hear our band, and then we'd go party afterwards at her son's house, and we became friends. And to me, she was, you know, my hero. I mean, you can't help but have my Angela as a hero. I was just blessed to know her. And we actually played for her uh, at her wedding in, in the 70s. Uh, she got married, and so she got our, my band to play. And, and it was just an ongoing relationship for, well, since the 70s until about 2010 or 15 when she passed. But, yeah, so... I just always felt blessed and still do to have known Maya Angelou because she's one of my heroes for sure. Yeah. And of course, Dolores Huerta is still alive and she's in there. But I, I mean, one thing that I think this, I mean, I can't wait to see the project in its entirety. I've only seen so far the, you know, the um, trailer, but I can see that Dolores Huerta is in there and some other real legends, right? People who have like blazed a trail. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dolores um, is. <laughs> how ahead. how long is the film altogether? It's a feature length uh, documentary. It's an an hour twenty plus minutes, um, and uh, uh, you know it, it, we never intended to do something that long. We thought maybe an hour or something like that. I I work in television, so the format is usually in an in an hour time slot. Uh, which means that you you do a show that's maybe 50 minutes long. But um, there was so much material and so many people came forward and were willing to be part of the project that it, you know, it, it really clearly needed to be a feature length project. That's beautiful. And when people watch it, what do you want them to take away from it? And And kind of who is your your key audience or do you want it to be a catch-all? Well, I think it's, uh, on a certain level, it's a catch-all. It definitely um, speaks directly to people who are aware of the movement and who were involved in either the farm workers movement or other movements along the ways. 
60s and 70s. It speaks to them directly because they it, it resonates on a lot of different levels in terms of their experiences and um and, and brings together what the the key uh point of the film is which is how arts and social movements work together and um so it definitely speaks to them but we're also you know want to reach uh young people younger people who did not experience that and who are just you know coming into their own today and uh as both as a um, a historical document that describes what happened and how that movement developed during that time period a time period that was very exciting and and you know uh, uh where a lot of things were happening but also the can serve as an example for them of how uh, they can use their talents, whatever their talents may be, to um, move forward uh, any social issues that they are they're aware of and want to become involved in. I mean, I think that it's very difficult for people to figure out exactly how to become involved in social change. And uh, this is a, a great example. What happened with the farm workers and artists and musicians, et cetera, is a great example of how um, people can get involved in social movements to to enact social change. I love that. And I I think that the phrase, I don't remember, I'm going to not get it exactly correct, but there's a phrase of like, when you can put a song with a movement, then it becomes something, then it has power. Um, Maybe you remember exactly the way it's worded, but I would love to hear from both of you why why you think that's important. What's the role of music um, and then in keeping a social movement alive? Let's start there. You know, uh, for me, like you say, with well, a song and a movement, uh, first of all, there's a line in the movie that uh, uh, was, was said by Chuy Barrera. It says that you can learn the truth from a song. And I I believe that in my own experience, and I think in everybody's experience, we've learned some forms of the truth in songs that we relate to, whether it be about love, whether it be about uh, social conditions, you know. And and I think that's very important, just like the arts. In a painting, you can learn the truth. You can see some a truth. And, and I love that. And and for me, the the, the truth of, uh, of our film, one of the fibers, like Andres touched on is, is the fact of for new generations to see the power of that, that movement or a movement and how the farm workers, a lot of people aren't aware of what the farm workers do. You know, they're, they think that they're, you know, the food just comes from wherever, you know, the shelves are safe. It comes or from Trader Joe's and there's no beforehand yeah. story, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's magically. Right. And I realizing what they're is eating and nourishing on. And, and so this story tells, uh, we were able to show once again what the farm workers went through and still go through today. So that form of uh, uh, treatment, better treatment and respect and honoring and acknowledging and appreciating what the farm workers do for our society. And to me, that's the core, the real you know message that I think developed uh, well, not developed, but something we can teach, you know, or uh, wake up, wake up people in that respect, you know, along with the other things of any social movement and generally. So I love that because uh, uh, my heart, my my passion to deep in what the farm workers do in any way we can be of help, which I feel this film is going to help a lot of ways. Uh, is I'm just grateful we can do that. Yeah. And I'd love to hear from both of you about this, but how do you personally connect with with the work that Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta did as organizers? Well, I was uh, doing radio shows uh, back in the early to mid 70s. And um, I, we were doing uh, bilingual programming, Spanish and English and covering a lot of different uh, issues. And one of the issues that we covered regularly was the organizing that uh, Dolores Huerta and Cesar were 
were doing at the time, the farm workers movement. And we covered it on a lot of different levels. Um, so I was, you know, really aware of it and aware of the history. And, um, you know, all, always felt that that was a, uh, a movement that was so basic in terms of, of the way Abel was describing it as a, a labor movement and uh, a human rights movement as well, human rights issues, and very basic in terms of what it was addressing, which is putting food on the table and people working to put food on the table. So, you know, I, I um, you know, don't come from that background. Many of the people in the film do. They were... Uh, farm workers at one point or another came from a farm worker background but it's a it's a connection that's very easy to make i think and how about yeah. for you Ava? well for me uh i think the area that really touched i, I worked uh at, in, in music uh i transferred uh at one point to raise my family got off the road and and got a, a job with the actually with the government and was involved in uh, a lot of I was an equal employment opportunity investigator working in the civil rights department. And, uh, and that, you know, really made me aware of, of uh, that equality, you know, and equal rights, civil rights, if you will. And, and then my family too, I come from a family uh, that are, were coal miners. So I had that affinity for, for the cause, you know, of people that are working a very hard job and not really, getting treated, uh, you know, for the, the the sacrifice and the kind of work they do. And I think that's what the core fiber for me that hits home. So I, I wanted to make a stand, if you will. You know, I still do. I always do when I see some inequality, you know. And so I think that's the fiber that runs mostly through me amongst everything else, like Andrea said, you know. The yeah. Same. yeah. And did you say you're, you were the you were from a family of coal miners? Right, right. My my dad's side of the family in Colorado, and uh, so I I related equality. I mean, uh, the farm workers and and coal miners. You know, I knew the history of coal miners through my uh, my you know family, my parents, uh, ancestors, and so I I heard that as a kid. I I visited where they worked and whatnot, and and saw and kind of internalized. You know, they would they would express how hard that work was and. And, you know, so it always remained with me. And so this was a natural transition. Also, you know, they're kind of parallel. So yeah. that's, that's so interesting. And I would love to like find out a little bit more about both of your um, backgrounds that brought you into the respective paths that you're in. I know that Andres has a connection with KPFA. And also, you know, Tarabu Betsere Kirkland. And one of the things that I found myself, you know, as I covered that particular film, 100 Years from Mississippi, is coming back to the phrase, remembering is a form of resistance. And part of me feels like, even though the younger generation, they kind of abstractly understand who is Dolores Huerta, who, who is um, Cesar Chavez, I feel like sometimes the memory, it, it like, we, I think, I'm hopeful that a film like this one could maybe help um, revitalize or keep keep the memory alive? Is that part of what you're hoping to do to make it accessible to the other generations? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I've been thinking a lot about history and and presenting history as a result of, have, of working on this film um, and doing screenings and presenting it to, to people and following up with discussions with people about it. And you know, I th I think that history um, uh, shows shows itself in every generation. I mean, it's there; it's part of of each generation, the history that's come before them, whether they know it or not. Right? Uh, in many forms, it's it has to do with their their upbringing, their you know their lifestyles, and the and in particular. The society that they're living in and um projects like this and exploring history i think illuminates different different things for people um 
and helps them understand what the what their current situation is, helps them understand it better and puts things into perspective. Um, for me, you know, being involved in the 60s and 70s and all of the uh, political upheaval that happened in this country and actually was happening all around the world during that time, um, you know, when I started learning about the Spanish Civil War or U.S., the the role of the U.S. in Central America and Latin America in general, and how uh, that history that went back to you know the early part of the 20th century, uh, and then of course farther back in terms of colonialism and whatever, um, when when I learned about that, it really clarified for me why it was so important what was happening in Cuba, what was happening in Central America, you know, what what was happening in in Chile, which is where my father's was from and my father's family was from. It all of a sudden, you know, the the history really helped uh, to to under for me to understand what it was that was going on. And this was, of course, happening on a lot of different levels with a lot of different people internationally. So yes, to you, to your question, I think, I really hope, and I think that that's one of the reasons that, that we made this film, that it will help um, young people today understand uh, the, the social situations today. Yeah, and hopefully draw some parallels, right? <laughs> draw some parallels, draw inspiration as well. Yes. And uh, as serve as an example of the types of things that can be done. I love that. Let's talk a little bit about sort of the nitty gritty of the film. Like what did the, like how long did it take for this film to come to fruition? Maybe starting with the music that you create that then gets layered in with the film. Um each of you had a different role with that part and to the actual part of production, like how, what does that process look like for you all time-wise? Well, well, the song, the song, the song you wrote in 2003. About three or four, I can't recall the exact year, but it was it, right in that period. That's where it began. And uh, so, yes, from, you figure we're in 2023 now, but the actual beginning of this production was at the point where, uh, you know, like I said, I, I feel blessed to meet Andres because of his, you know, background. And we had similar uh, interests, you know, and as you just heard, his expertise in in, in film and also background in studies of, uh, you know, all the different things, the social movements and whatnot. And and, and so, you know, we, when we connected, that was in about 2005, I believe. And because I... I and in 2006, by then we had already finished that six minute piece together, the uh, uh, and kind of a music video thing of the song. And and from there, we started the journey of, after Maya Angelou's order, you're gonna do this film, you, you guys need to do this film, you know? And she uh, she brilliantly said, it's not just you and Andres' song, you know, it's my song, it's, uh, the little boy over here, little girl, all the, you know, she expressed like how many uh, young folks, you know, is their song also. And that was the impetus to start. And that was in about 2006, uh, seven. And so we, we started, we started our journey and it, it progressively picked up, but you're looking at, we finished it maybe a couple of years ago now, pretty much close to finish. And uh, at that point, and that, you know, it was just a, a kind of became a work of love. You know, we did it on our own dime, our own time over the years, you know, and getting in a two man band. We were a two man band basically for a lot of years, getting in the car. Andres would get his equipment together and we'd get together and I'd go down, we'd go to LA, we'd go wherever to interview whoever it was. And so there was a lot of different elements of work as I look back on it over the years that we collaborated on. And, and it was a, just a good partnership that, you know, evolved into something that, like you said, Andres said, we, we really wanted to uh, inspire and, and young, young folks today to see that, you know, 
we're passing the baton and say, look, you can do something too with your art, your talent, whatever it is, whatever your skills may be for the betterment of society, if you can. And uh, so, yeah, that's about the trajectory. I mean, it's been, it's been a lot of years and we had, we had, I think about what, under 60 hours worth of footage over the years accumulated roughly. To- yeah. So, th- so the way, the way that we did it was, uh, you know, initially after, my Angelou's directive, you know, we really weren't sure yet what the what the film project was going to be, what we were going to do. But what we did know was that we needed to talk to people. We needed to interview people. We'd already started doing some interviews. And so th- this worked two ways. One, Abel, because he was involved in the music scene in, in San Francisco and uh you know, pretty deeply involved back in the 60s. He knew everybody. So he started making calls and setting up uh, interviews with uh, with people and finding out who would be interested in, in becoming involved in this. And that was a basis of not just who were interesting musicians to talk to, but also who had worked with the farm workers back then. There were these uh, big music benefits that happened uh, back in the early 70s in support of the farm workers. And uh, they happened for a whole number of, of, a number of years and a lot of artists were involved. Abel knew a lot of them, so he would get in touch with them and set up set up an interview and we'd go and, and interview and talk to them about their experiences, about how they, whether they knew Cesar Chavez or Dolores Huerta and how they were involved with supporting the farm workers movement. And little by little, talking to people, we realized that what we were doing was creating a film that told the story that I mentioned earlier, how arts and and uh, social movements work together, and that we were going to tell through their, the voices of the people who did it, you know. And so at that point, it was another probably... 10, 12 years of identifying people that we should interview, going and interview them, like Abel mentioned, essentially on the weekends, a a two-day trip to LA or whatever, uh, on our own dime, and gathering the material. And at, at the same time, starting to put it together in very rough forms, and eventually getting it down to what became the film a song for caesar i love it so really if you think about it doesn't like you said the song was written around 2002 2003 that doesn't just happen so we could say this is probably a 20 like a quarter of a century project right like it's it's been a lifelong project not quite a quarter of a century but but probably uh 15 years or 16 years is a good estimate as to how long it took us yes okay well and then if we think back to when the song was written right like that's that's, that's kind an, of a an, another another four years five years <laughs> yeah yeah right. so a long time in the making and some people would say well why bother this is rhetorical for me because i can't wait to see this but i just have to ask you why bother why is it worth putting so many years into a project like this you, you know it it uh it just kind of picked up steam as it went, uh, starting with with uh, the collaboration with Andreas and myself, and and that was you know a gift and, and if you will, and then the fact that Maya's you know pushing uh, saying you know you have to do it, and then what really for me happened was the interviews when they started talking to those people that actually lived through it, why they lived through it, why they contributed, why they were part of it. They started telling the story and we were blessed in that respect because all of a sudden we didn't need to get a narrator. People were saying at the beginning of the project, oh, well, you got to get a narrator, get James Olmos or, or Peter Coyote or whoever to you know narrate this film. And we were thinking about doing that. We were going to start pursuing. But as we started doing these initial interviews, they were starting to tell the story and not only tell the story, but to lead us in how to tell the story. You know, they were leading us, they were they were building the story, 
by their, you know, their input and their, you know, so. So it's told with multiple voices. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I love that. And yeah. I, I have to, Andres, I mentioned this to you when I first met you and you told me about the film. Um, one of my first interviews at KPFA was with Dolores Huerta. And I made the mistake of saying to her, you know, what was it like to help Cesar? And she corrected me quickly. And I, I promised her that anytime that he's being talked about, I'll always ask this question. So I have to, because she feels sometimes like she gets left out of the narratives. And so, um, What's your thought process around that? And maybe how did that inform your decision to include, it sounds like you at least included her voice in the film, but just sharing that question because of my promise to Dolores. Yeah, sure. Well, let me just say before before that, and, um, and I'll let Abel talk more about that as well, because he has, a, has had a, a very close relationship with Dolores for a long time. Um, but let me just say before that, that uh, you asked, why make this film? And, you know, I knew, we knew that other films had been made about the farm workers. And films have been made about individual musicians and individual artists. But um, the one film that hadn't been made was this film, the how uh, artists musicians, actors, writers, painters uh, worked with the farm workers and generally how how they work with social movements. That film has not been made. And so, you know, at that point, once we realized that, then it was clear that we needed to do this. And the other part of it was over the years, uh, we've had a great time doing making this film i mean going and talking to the people that we talk to uh well-known people other you know really talented people uh has just been really a lot of fun and very interesting and you know i i would have done it just to do that you know mm -hmm. in terms of, of dolores uh, she was involved from early on with this project she was one of the first interviews that we did and um, she's, you know, Caesar passed away in the in the nineties. Dolores, who is now you know ninety two, ninety three years old, she's still been going strong all these years, and was you know a a, a very important um, person to talk to at the very beginning of our project, because she did. She gave us a, a sort of a, a framing of how to look at the farm workers, how to look at Caesar, and how to look at, at the movement. Um, you know, she made it clear to us that Caesar saw himself not as a, a leader of the Chicano movement, not a leader of uh, uh, Chicano, the Chicano people. He saw himself as a, a labor organizer as the leader of a union. And she clearly described him as a person who dedicated his life to farm workers and to the, the needs of farm workers. And that just put really in a, in a clear perspective for us how to present um, the, the issue of the farm workers movement in this film. That it really is about people who are doing hard work and who uh, do, are doing important work and who deserve to be treated right. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And our time is going so fast. We've got about four minutes left here. So I'm going to fly through a few things, but I, and I also love, I appreciate the perspective and the framing you just gave me address. Like the short answer is Dolores is still here to tell her story and he's not. So I can totally appreciate that. So I was going to ask these two questions, but I'm going to see if I can combine them and you choose which one you'd like. So either what is the most important lesson you learned while making this project or what does the rhythm of change mean to you and how does that apply to life? Like, and I like it in the framing of this particular project, social movements, passing the baton, all the different things. I have a real quick one to get on there some time too on this. And I think what, what I've learned is that that principle of, never giving up 
the perseverance says that and the Lord is they never give up they only you only fail when you stop trying and that's that that's what I, I learned or was reaffirmed I actually learned it in a big way too it, it affirmed that and now it's one of my core values if I can pass it on to whoever yeah it's a long time in the making right thank you so much how about for you Andres I think that uh for me the experience of doing this film was really an energizing experience. You know, I've been involved in a lot of things in the past and um, as has Abel, uh, but, you know, and I'm not a young person anymore. I'm getting on in, in, in years as well, but this has been a, a very energizing experience. And it, for me, it's fuel for the future. Do either of you feel comfortable sharing your ages? 74. Yeah. We're both 74. Yeah. We're both 74. That's <laughs> awesome. So you've spent a significant chunk of life working on this. I love that. Tell us, where can we find the project? When are the opportunities to view it? How can we follow your work? The, the main thing is uh, it's going to be on PBS, American Masters, on September 29th. Uh, it'll be followed, rebroadcast on September 30th, but it'll be available through PBS, uh, premiering on September 29th at 10 p.m., I believe, American Masters. That's wonderful. And then is there a website where we can follow along? Yes, it's songforcaesar.com. Uh, it'll be on there. And uh, and also, um, well, it's, it's streamed. I don't know, Andres, if you know the streaming uh, that's available. I think it's uh, Apple, Apple, iTunes streaming and something else. What was it? It's on iTunes streaming as well as uh, Amazon Prime. Okay. You can, yeah. you can stream it there. Um, we're also doing uh, screenings, in-person screenings. Um, I don't have a, a schedule right now, but... Uh, We'll let people know through the website and we'll continue to do that. The in-person screenings are very important. And they, people can also, just a quick side note, people could book the in-person screening, like they can find your contact information there and um, book it. Absolutely. Right, right. All right. Well, thank you both so much for taking time to talk with me today. I'm really excited to see the film and um, I can't wait. So let's talk soon. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye.